Hey guys, I'm not sure if you saw the last video that I did where I was working on the Jeep and I was using this battery load tester and the switch went bad on me. Now this unit's about five and a half, six years old and it's worked great, but when the switch decides to die, what do you do? You can replace the switch, but these switches are only rated at 15 amps. This unit is a 100 amp load tester. How many times is the switch going to work before it just burns up? So instead of either going out and buying a new unit that's going to have the same switch and run into the same problem, I decided to install a 120 amp relay on the side of this that's controlled by this switch. So all that this switch is doing now is energizing this relay and this is handling the main load. If you want to see how I did this, stay tuned and I'm about to show you. This is a switch that came in that unit. This says that it's rated at 16 amps. So this unit right here says that it's pulling a 100 amp load to run the test. So I bought some replacement switches. However, I'm going to take this a step further. I bought this relay that's rated at 120 amp and what that will allow me to do is i connect across terminals 85 and 86 to energize the coil and then it's going to make a contact between 87 and 30. if you're not familiar with what a relay is or what it does a relay takes a very low current across these small terminals and there is a magnetic coil in there and it pulls a larger current capacity contactor between 30 and 87 which as you can see 30 and 87. so i'm going to take and put a new this is a momentary switch i got this off of amazon same as this and i'm going to put the momentary switch back in this unit and have it actually energized through the relay and that will make it to where this switch doesn't have to transfer the entire load that this thing's trying to test now I spent about $19 on these parts. I could have bought, just bought a brand new one at Harbor Freight for $19 or $20. I think it was $19.99, but it's done the same way. It uses a very low current switch. Eventually this switch is going to burn up. I mean, there's just, there's no way that it's not going to trying to transfer that much current. So anyway, let's get started and get this installed. So the first thing that I need to do is take this apart. Okay, so the way that this switch was working when you energized it, it was making contact between here and here. It was basically taking these two wires and connecting to those two wires, which then connect into this side. And basically it's switching the negative side, energizing this big piece of wire here, which is essentially a heater. So we're going to take and mount this somewhere i have very limited real estate i don't want to put it up here because that's where all that heat's generated where can we fit this well so really my only option is going to be to mount this on the outside and it probably would make more sense to put it on this side we'll just mount it like that yep that's what we're going to do all right and we're going to roll with it that way and see how it all turns out now I've got these little grommets. There we go. So we got a rubber grommet. We'll be able to run those wires. So this is the switch that I got here. This came in a three pack. I'll post a link to this in the description as well as this relay. So we're just going to put that right there. Figure we'll just do it that way for, yep. So that'll basically trip that relay. I've got some number eight or eight gauge right here. And I'm going to take this here. I'm gonna disconnect where this is connected, make a longer wire that'll be able to come out. This is the negative side, so I need to make sure, yeah, connect into that. Yeah, so let's just, we're gonna strip these here and we'll put those together and then we'll make this a little longer so we're going to fire up the soldering iron get it heating up 
and then we're gonna throw some heat shrink over it. I think that size will probably work out good. Let me cut a smaller section of that off. So that's what was on it. We're just going to replace that probably a little longer. Go with that terminal there. All right, that solder iron is probably heated up pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of put that over there like that. And then we're gonna solder that. Look at that. That's old right there. I sure do miss those old radio shacks. I'm gonna grab my heat gun here. I'm gonna tie a big knot in the cord. And we'll grab that piece of heat shrink. I need to run something that's going to run across this coil here. It doesn't really matter if I switch the positive or switch the negative. So I'm going to use this little wire here. We'll strip it back. Put two little ring terminals on it. Probably should have just kept that out. Doesn't matter. You guys don't care. So that's going to run through that as well. We're going to switch the positive and the reason being is because when this is sitting on the outside, the negative is what the relay is going to energize. We'll already have a negative out there. So really, if we do it that way, we can just take one of these and short it to the negative and then we'll switch that positive. That makes the most sense. So we're going to grab a lug that's big enough to go on these terminals. And then we just need this to be real short. And we will put one that will mount onto that terminal down there. Go ahead and heat shrink this. Perfect. So basically this will fit... onto this ooh, that's hot. terminal here and then it's going to connect right into there and then we'll be able to energize it by going to this terminal here we're going to use this to handle that so we're going to need two more of these to go to that switch Heat shrink these. So I think we've got everything ready to push it through here. And we can close this up. That goes there. So what I'm doing is I'm we're going to switch the positive. So I'm going to put this on the positive side, just like that. And then this is the positive side. I know that because it's red. So we're going to hook that up just like that. And then this one goes on the other side. It gets tight in here. I'm trying to deal with all these wires to get everything hooked up. So let's push that through. We also need this to go through there, which I probably should have ran it first. So this is going to connect into the other side of that switch, what we've got here. So 
we're coming the positive line comes in and we're grabbing hot or positive off of the meter and then we're going into the switch and then we're coming out of the other side of the switch and that's going to be used to energize that relay the negative we actually do need to know which one that is and that's going to be this one that's right here so i'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape or something like that on it so that it can identify that this is the negative just going to throw a little piece of black tape on it that way i know that that's the negative side so all that i really need to do now is connect the negative terminal to the meter because it's kind of pointless to have this thing without a meter so we'll put that right there all right and that one's tight so we can go ahead and put this back together all right now all that's left to do is connect all of this together and we should be good i think i'm actually going to mount this up a little higher than what i was originally thinking so yeah so we're gonna push this in here make it where it kind of comes out right about there that's going to connect into that and then we just need to put two ring terminals on these and get it connected pull this out we'll go to my crimps and fuses yes we do All right, so this is the negative one. So we're gonna put it right there. And then we'll just mount that right there. Yeah, it would have been nicer to be able to keep it inside the unit, but there just wasn't enough room we're going to tighten these down. All right, let's get me screw and we'll screw that down. So I just went and got a little sharp point screw here. Uh, I'm not going to pre-drill these things. If you put enough pressure on them, this is so thin of metal, they'll work fine. Normally, you know, yeah, you could do a self tapper. I don't like those on this thin metal because it seems like the hole that it creates when it's self-tapping is too big. There we go. So now when I push this switch, it should trip that relay and then take that current and run it through that versus relying on the switch to do it. So here's what we've got. It looks pretty good. Let's go test it out. So I don't have a vehicle inside. The vehicle's parked outside. So I'm just going to test it on my lawnmower here. Place that there. We're going to grab the negative. And grab the positive. All right. So as you can see, we're at... A little over 12 volts and that works perfect. So now like the main current is running through this relay versus the switch itself. All the switch is doing is energizing this relay. So there's a 120 amp contactor in this relay and this unit should run forever now or at least until it burns up that coil that's in there if i hold it down long enough you can see that coil in there it's going to start turning red i don't want to kill this battery too much but there you go you can see it turning red
So now when this thing's testing for current draw, this thing is 100 amps that it's drawing. It's not relying on the cheap little 15 amp switch that it came with to transfer 100 amps of current. It now, that main current runs through this little relay. So I spent about $18 on the parts to fix it this way. And I can pretty much guarantee you that this unit will not go bad because of the switch anymore. Something else might, but I've had this for a little over five years now and it's been working great, but you know, eventually a 15 amp switch can only handle running hundred amps so long and it's gonna end up burning those contactors out, which is exactly what happens. Well, guys, I appreciate you watching the video. This thing I'm sure is gonna last me for many, many, many years now, and it's gonna function a whole lot better than having to try to transfer 100 amps through this little 15 amp switch right here. So I hope this helps you guys out. If you've got one of these meters and are tired of burning these switches up, tired of spending 20 bucks every time one goes bad, hey, spend another 20 bucks, buy this relay, buy the switch, follow the steps in this video, and you'll never have to buy another one of these units 